Hi everybody, we are back. And I am setting up some video right now because we're gonna double screen this thing like a Nintendo handheld. Uh, a DS? A DS, yeah. That's how you do it. That's like the last handheld I've used. I'm, I'm behind. Um, Wait, no Switch? Uh, okay, so I have a Switch, it's in a box. It's waiting for me to take it out. That's how busy I've been. <laughs> um, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm gonna play some like Xenoblade. It's gonna be great. But yeah, so um, can everyone hear Jenny? I want to make sure we get our sound right from the start. Oh, uh, they're calling you out. Sound okay? Hi, chat. Thank you for all the birthday wishes. Slightly older than last time you saw me. <laughs> But you look so good. Thanks. It's the wig. Oh, I see. Cosplay. <laughs> Magic. We, we've learned oh. the trick of becoming someone else so we can become a younger version of ourselves. Yes. <laughs> That's the secret. How to stay young forever. Just continue cosplaying. Just cosplay forever. Excellent. All right. Well, <laughs> it sounds like they can hear you, so that's awesome. So, um... That was my dad calling to wish me a happy birthday. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <Sorry. laughs> that is great. That's cute. Okay, so um, everyone, what we're going to do here is uh, I'm going to kick off like normal, but you might notice a little bit more of the stuff flipping around on the screen because I want to make sure that we get a good zoom in on the hands as they make jewelry because that's what we're doing today. So my apologies if it gets crazy up in there, but it's part of the fun, right? It's like we're doing it live. Um, it'll be great. So, um, yeah, if you've been to Cosplay America in person, there's a pretty good chance you've seen Jenny. Uh, she's definitely the returning champion and record holder, uh, and we love her dearly. So, um, I, I feel like I don't even really need to introduce you, but just in case, and because I've done it for everyone else, and at this point, it's just part of the format, I'm going to read your introduction from the website just to catch Ooh. people up. Um, and I apologize in advance if there's a word in here that I don't remember being in here and can't pronounce. We'll find out. Um, <laughs> all right, everybody. Jennifer Jenny Barclay is an award-winning artist who fears no medium. Her vast background has given her a wide range of skills, including traditional illustration, digital art, animation, and, of course, cosplay. Jenny thrives on challenges, especially those that others believe is impossible. See, that's on us. That was our mistake. There we go. I'll have to fix that later. Uh, she's a professional creative director at the digital media company Moxie, and her work has been shown internationally. Despite all she does, when Jenny finds some free time, she prefers to spend it with a controller in hand while hosting the gaming web show Backward Compatible. See, you're you're more up to date on games than I am. Oh, that's I haven't run that show in a while, actually. So maybe that's a maybe everything is old. I don't know. <laughs> well, you know what? A lot has changed this year. We're just gonna. We'll blame everything on 2020 for the next 20 years anyway. So that is where the typo came from. That is where me having slightly outdated copy comes from. Or maybe yeah. significantly outdated. Who knows? It's backwards compatible. It means it's good forever. Yeah, it, it's it's on hiatus for several years. But Ooh, uh, well, I mean, that's, I mean, so is backwards compatibility on my PlayStation. Like, what do you want from me? That's true. Absolutely. But, <laughs> excellent. I know, I should bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> This is your birthday present. I'm giving you work. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> no problem. All awesome. right. But yeah, you're here and you're going to tell us all kinds of cool stuff. So I'm just going to stop talking and saying things that are wrong and out of date. And I'm going to hand it over to you while I get these cameras set up. Awesome. Uh, well, I'm particularly excited about today. Uh, one, because I get to go and show something close up, which is really hard to do at conventions. Like it's hard to teach a room with like 15 people and it's something that you have to be like, inches away from to see. So hopefully you guys will be able to see everything as I do it. Um, and a lot of what I'm teaching now is stuff that I actually learned years and years and years ago when I used to work at the Georgia Renaissance Festival. So I worked uh, in one of the jewelry booths uh, for years and got to learn how to do like glass blowing and metal work. And a lot of it was uh, beading and then some like wire working for jewelry and things like that. So uh, that's what I'm gonna teach today because that's kind of how I got into jewelry making, kind of got started in it. And 
I mean, when we were out at the Renaissance Festival, we literally had like a couple pliers and just whatever was on hand. So there wasn't like fancy tools or beading boards or things like that. We were literally like on a piece of wood with rain pouring down on us wearing corsets, making anklets for people. Um, so I don't know, it was, a, it was fun to learn that way and just make do with what you have. And I think that's a really good way to get started. Like you don't have to buy a bunch of fancy stuff. You just need a couple of things to get going. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna run through what I've taught people when we were at the Renaissance Festival, how to do. Um, and I'll just get through as much as I can. But all of the stuff I've used since then, like in cosplays, in other like just random projects, they're just really handy little techniques that come into play. So I'm gonna start off with a technique to do like, a, like make your own findings or clasps, if you will, for bracelets or anklets or necklaces. So there is a type of clasp, like let's say you've got like you want to make a necklace out of leather or this is actually the leather we're going to use today. I got this off Amazon actually because 2020 and I wasn't going out to stores, but it's basically like a braided leather. Um, I like this because it has like a nice rustic look. So if you're doing, I don't know, a renaissance -y type costume, uh, this fits right in. Or if I was doing like Link or something like that, this would feel right for a necklace or a bracelet or something in that kind of fantasy world. Um, so when you get this, a lot of times you'll find necklaces that have a clasp, you're used to seeing these, but they, and this one hasn't been finished yet, but they'll have kind of these open clasps where the idea is you put these in here and you use your pliers to clamp down around it. There's a little kind of triangle piece there that like hooks into whatever material you have and it closes around it. So I've actually got an example of what a finished one of those looks like. This is actually from like a phone strap type thing I made. Same kind of braided leather, twisted leather piece, but you'll see this one's kind of clamped down around it. And these are fine and they hold and they're great, but they're really modern looking. So, you know, if you're going for something, I don't know, Renaissance, this to me just has a really modern feel. So. Um, when we worked at the Renaissance Festival, we, the collective we, uh, me and everyone I worked with, um, we learned how to do these kind of class, which is basically wire work and it's winding, uh, but it looks a lot, I don't know, more decorative and not modern. It looks like something you do in ye old days at ye old Renaissance Festival and it basically just hooks in. So this is what I'm gonna start with today, showing you guys how to make those clasps and then also different things you can do with it. Here was like a really quick, tiny little bracelet I put together just before this started actually, um, but still using the same type of clasps to do sort of centerpieces. So that's where we're gonna to start today, guys. Look at that manicure. Don't look at the manicure. Uh, COVID, I have not been able to go, uh, fill in anything, so no judgment, it's my birthday. Uh, so what we're gonna use, guys, is that leather I was showing you before, so braided leather. You can get this craft stores, you can get this online, wherever, Etsy. Uh, I literally just primed some stuff because I didn't realize I was out of it until literally a day or two ago. Um, but then you're gonna use wire around it. Today I'm gonna to use 20 gauge. Uh, this is from Hildy Joe. I got this at like Joanne's a while ago. Again, you can get this all over the place. Um, gauge, you can get wire in different gauges. Uh, for example, this is an 18 gauge. And then on the other end of the spectrum, here's a 22 gauge. So you can kind of see, hopefully you can see, uh, like this guy's a lot thicker. This one's a lot thinner. There's basically you're looking for like the lower the number kind of the, you start getting thicker or like stronger, it's a little harder to uh, maybe work with. I mean, it's still, this is all made for beading, so it's pretty easy uh, to wrap. Um, I tend to base it off of like what you're winding. So if you're doing something really fine and delicate um, and you need to like string through tiny seed beads, things like that, that's where you could use like a 22 gauge and get like thinner and it's a little bit more delicate, you might need to wind it a bit more for that structural integrity. Um, but for this, we're using a 20 gauge today. So 
Um, usually what I'll do is I'll just cut off a length of wire. I've got this left over, so we'll use this first and we'll cut some more. Um, when you get really used to handling uh, the wire, you can kind of have just a big roll of it and you don't have to cut it off and you get used to like working without getting mucked up. But I recommend when you're starting, cut yourself a good length and just commit to wasting a little bit of it while you learn because a lot of this is practice. So as far as materials, this is what we need to get started. Uh, for tools, so we've got jewelry pliers, uh, jeweler's pliers. So these are rounded. That's kind of the difference between a regular needle nose pliers, which are, you know, flat. I'm hoping most of you guys have seen needle nose pliers. Um, jewelry pliers are round and they can still grab just like regular pliers, but you'll see we're going to start using these to like do these curves and the twisting and uh, basically that's what they're made for. They're made for all this kind of wire work. Uh, I also have these to cut uh, their wire cutters. You don't actually need these if you don't have them. Most needle nose pliers have uh, the ability to cut kind of baked in. And we're gonna use that to cut the wire and also cut like our leather down. I just kind of got these because I figured it'd be easier for y'all to see what I'm doing. So yeah, with as few a tools as these, and these are not necessarily the most expensive things. Um, I will say, that if you're buying a set of pliers, get ones that have like a comfortable grip or are built for your hands. So at one point, and I think I got these from Joann's, there was some sort of kit that had every kind of like jewelry plier. Oh God, I still have one of these. I threw most of these out. So they had like this cute set of all these cute pliers and they're like this big, but let me tell you what, the level of pain, excruciating pain of having to like, work with something that doesn't fit your hand and you're putting pressure in like these weird places is nightmarish. Like you'll get horrible blisters if you're doing a lot of like wire work. So um, you don't have to spend a lot of money, but if you're gonna get a pair, at least make sure it's one that's like sized for your hand. I like these cause they're, I don't know, more ergonomic, um, but you can get by with whatever. Uh, you can also do some of this with just pliers it ain't as pretty or as easy, but uh, yeah, let's dive into how we uh, do these. So there's two basic sides to this. There is one that is the hook, which is this, like the clasping side, if you will. And then you have the other, which is like the, the circle or what you're connecting into. So let's look at how we make this one first, because this is the one you're going to use also if you do center pieces, like that's how you're going to connect any middle pieces and that's the one we're going to use the most of. So uh, what we do is get your jeweler's plier and you're going to just hold on to the very tip uh, of your wire. And I usually take it, so again, you'll see these get thicker as you go up. We don't want a circle, if you can see how these are sitting. I try and find a size that's gonna be about the same diameter. That's circumference, 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 diameter. What's the, across the circle? Diameter, diameter, I was right, math. Um, you want it about the diameter of what your actual, like the leather you're working with. So if you have a thicker leather, you may wanna take this kind of further down uh, your pliers. For us, we're gonna go about yay. This should get us about the right size. And just holding on to the edge real tight, uh, you're just gonna give it a turn all the way around like so. So we've kind of wrapped it around the edge like this. Uh, and that gives us like a nice pretty little circle to start with. Uh, now if it's, this one's actually pretty flat, but if you like, aren't used to it or ends up a little off, you can always use your pliers to flatten that sucker out. But the goal is to just have a nice flat circle. Then you're gonna take the edge of your leather. And now with your regular pliers, the flat part, you're gonna basically use that circle you just made and hold it onto the leather. And I give myself about uh, like the top part of my knuckles worth of leather to work with. So I guess something I didn't mention is when you're making these, I cut off a little extra leather, like lengthwise than what I'll need, a little bit longer. Because as we go, we're actually gonna be 
trimming off a little bit and you'll see how that happens as we go. But the idea is you hold this really tight and then following the circle, like the loop goes like this, we're gonna just continue and wrap in that direction around. So you just pull and kind of lift up and go around. And you wanna try and keep it nice and close to that original loop. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, and you wanna make sure you're giving a nice even amount of tension because unlike that modern looking piece that has that little triangle in there that catches the material, this completely relies on just doing enough loops and that tension and pressure of how tightly you're wrapping this, holding on to it. So if you do it too loose, you could have your leather slide out. Uh, if you do it too tight, they could end up really uneven or like squished. Uh, and really this is what everyone who's learned this technique, it just takes a little bit of practice to make sure they're even. Sometimes when you do it, you might start kind of overlapping, but really I find it easiest just to like one loop at a time, just pull nice and tight around. And I usually go about, I don't know, four, four or five loops. Again, it's kind of a design choice depending on what you're making. Uh, if I'm doing something bigger, like a necklace, I might have an extra wrap. If I'm doing something really delicate, I might have fewer. But basically, you're trying to end up with something like that. And we're going to keep this kind of pointing out that way. The reason being is we've got all this extra leather that we don't want. And that's where either using what's built in here or just wire cutters, we're going to cut off all that extra leather so it's a nice end of that piece, right? Next step, we're gonna take and turn that piece that was going straight upright. Um, and again, you'll notice where I stopped it, it wasn't underneath. I stopped it on top on the same side where we already have our cute little like loop happening um, because we're gonna try and like, this is basically the front side or the, the decorative side and we want all our loops to kind of match up. So since we're doing a circle here, um, again, we're probably going to cut it about, again, a knuckle, like a, I used to use my nail as an example, but I have this horrible nail, so it's a bad, bad example, but it's always about the length of my natural nail to the end of my finger. How about that? Does that kind of show? Um, and then what we're going to do is make this a nice curve. The trick to nice curves and wire work is you never want to just like hold onto one spot and kind of turn it to bend. You basically want to do like small little twists all along the wire so you get a nice curve started and then you can kind of grab the end and tug it around and make it a circle. Can you guys see that? It's so tiny. Um, and you'll notice like I've taken the edge of it, and instead of having it just stick up, I kind of use that natural leather, and I push into it. So, let's see if I can get an angle on that. But you can see it's tucking into that leather, so it's not going to go anywhere, and it looks nice and finished. It kind of gives the illusion like it's tucking back under all the twists we've already done, um, but it's nice and closed off. Now, in the process of all this, I've kind of lifted up this circle a little bit. You can see he popped up. Uh, and that's an easy fix. You can just take your pliers and squish them down. So we've got a nice finished decorative uh, little piece there. Did that make sense? Any questions so far? Not so far. Thanks. Confirmation on diameter. I had it right. I should have committed to it. Uh, okay, so that is the simpler of the two. Uh, let's now talk about how we do the hook, which is honestly just as easy it's just a little different at the end uh, so we're going to start it the same way mm, I don't know if that's enough wire for what we're doing I'm gonna get a nice long piece do, 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 do. if I can find the end maybe this will be our day there it is uh, and I usually don't unwrap my wire. I just kind of find the end, find the end, and uh, push it out and then cut off what I need because I find it easier to store if these just stay wound up. 
usually it's not such a pain. I blame my heinously long nails for this. Yeah. So usually you can just kind of push out the excess and then you cut off what you need. Um, I'm gonna just get us a nice long piece. We're gonna commit to a little bit of waste in the interest of practice. So let's start the exact same way that we did the last one. So we're gonna do about the same spot on our jewelry pliers. We're gonna give it a nice little twist. Make sure it connects and it's nice and flat. Looks great. We're gonna do the same thing. Now here's something important to note. This is gonna come back around and connect. So we don't want to put the circle like on the underside over here. Like we don't want it to be, how do I show this as an example? Let's pretend these are the same side. Like we wouldn't want to have something connect where it looks like this, where like you've got the nice decorative side here, but not there. You want it to be like two decorative sides facing up the same direction on your piece, right? Like this is going around your wrist. You want them on the same side. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind. Like if this is our loop and we're not putting anything in the center of it, we wanna make sure to start this on the same face of the leather as the other one. Get on there. And once you've done this a few times, you can actually start them a little closer to the edge if you want. Um, I just always like having a little extra because I'd rather need to wind more and have extra leather to grip onto versus not leave myself enough and have to just like pull it off and start again. Uh, okay, so we've got him. Say what? Oh no. Uh, well, Tom has left me, so. <laughs> I'll swap it over to a full screenshot of your hands. Sounds good. You're not missing anything with my face, I promise. Or Disagree, maybe but fair enough. <laughs> I'll yell at Tom when he comes back down. He's abandoned me. Um, okay, so we're gonna do the same thing where we're gonna do a few twists. Usually once you've kind of committed to a number on one side, you kind of want something similar happening on the other. Um, but we're gonna do the same thing where we keep it nice and tight. And you'll notice I kind of pull like, over like to get it towards where the last loop was um instead of just wrapping straight around i kind of like cheat and pull a little this way because it makes it tighter of a coil um because sometimes like starting out i used to get like gaps in this um sometimes if you pull too tight they'll kind of cross this really is just do it a few times and you'll get it um practice makes perfect there's no shortcuts for some techniques, sometimes it's muscle memory. Um, but all right, so we have, I think the same number. Yep, good enough. Uh, so what we're gonna do, same thing. We haven't bent this yet, it's straight, so we can cut off our leather. Now in this case, instead of having just that little knuckles worth, we're actually gonna cut our wire a bit longer. And when you're starting out, if you're not sure how long to cut, it's always better to like cut longer because you can always like cut more away. Um, you can't add wire back in. That said, if you ever mess any of this up, like you really screw it up, you can literally like unwind these and then just do another one. So there, you haven't like ruined the whole thing. There's no such thing. Um, so for this one, we've cut it. We're gonna do the same thing that we did last time where we kind of bend it upright. So now it's kind of pointing the same direction as everything else. Uh, and here's where things get wild. So before we just curve, we made like one big loop. In this case, we're gonna take and we're gonna do basically the same thing we did down here to the tip of this, but we're gonna have it turn away, not in like as if we were finishing this off, but away. Uh, and for these, I use the very tippy tip of the jeweler's pliers because we want this loop to be pretty small. So I get it right there at the edge and I give it a little twist. And then this one, you'll notice I didn't twist it completely around. I actually like taking my pliers and then, let's see if I can get this where you guys can see it, kind of squishing this 
So it's as small as possible uh, because what we've just made there, there's the one I already made, is sort of the edge of this little loop. Like that's what's gonna go in and kind of catch when we do it. So you don't want it to be huge. I mean, you could make it huge, but then you have to make everything else really big so it accommodates. Um, so yes, we've got him, he's facing out, which seems crazy, but not to worry, that's all part of the plan. Uh, for this one, now we're gonna curve kind of, instead of just doing one, you could do a circle curve like the other one, that's your edge. But what we're gonna do is gently curve a little of all of this. Now we're going the same direction as the other thing. Uh, and then what I like to do is take kind of about yay far down and just guide it. I've actually made this quite big. Uh, this is a very big class. So you've kind of pulled it around and down and I like to get it to where it's just about to touch that leather piece. And there's only a tiny bit of gap there. Can you guys see that? better from the front side. Uh, so it's almost touching the leather, but there's a little bit of space there. And what that does is that gives you enough room to get this in there. But the cool thing about the leather, leather is like it naturally just kind of gets in the way. So it makes it a little harder to like have it just come off you if you're wearing it. Uh, now, if you're going to wear this somewhere where you really don't want to like lose it, you can put this can pull this straight kind of into the leather like that so then when you clasp or unclasp it it's a little extra tricky like it resists more I guess you guys can't hear the clicking but like ugh, it's harder uh, and that really makes sure that when you're wearing it it's not gonna like just undo itself does that make sense hopefully it makes sense questions so far Could call grabbing the loose end of the wire. I like sending wire flying across the room. You let me live my best life. All right, so that is how to make both parts of that. So now let's talk about how to do, to add something cool to the center of it. And I use cool in quotes because like, I mean, that's cool, right? I just threw some stones on there. Um, so in this case, I'm just gonna pretend this is all measured and we're at a great size, but we basically want the other side of this to have whatever the decorative thing is. So we're just gonna make two more of these dudes. Uh, and now we're experts, because we've made one already. So we can just whiz through these. So it's a little twisteroo. Uh, same thing, I always like keeping these together so I can make sure I'm staying kind of on that top side. Uh, so all my little circles are roughly on the same part of the letter. It's very annoying to finish and realize you put one on upside down. And then we're gonna twist. And this is the kind of stuff that like, it takes a little bit of time, but it starts to get, once you've done a few, it's a little, uh, you don't have to focus on it as much. So you can have a show on in the background or you can wear a corset and judge people walking by your booth all day. Uh, you know, it doesn't require that much focus. Let's give this one more twist for good measure. Zoop. The booth I used to work at was literally across from the uh, Ocarina booth. And the people who worked at the Ocarina booth only knew how to play two songs. So to this day, I'm triggered when I hear an Ocarina play. Fun fact. All right, so we're gonna trim this guy again about a nail's length. Boop, boop. We're gonna point him forward like so great guy and then we're going to do the thing where we do the like nice gentle bends and you'll notice for this since I'm trying to get a wider circle I'm kind of higher up on the pliers uh that's because it's a wider surface so it gets like a wider circle going on um and you can get really good at these where they're like perfect circles I'm kind of going fast uh but I kind of like I've always liked the more boxy thing that's my style if you came to the Georgia Renaissance Festival uh, between like 2000 and 2010, you could probably identify which of these I made because I had my own style. Um, so we did one of those. Notice I'm leaving this open for now. So we're gonna keep this open because we're gonna add something and attach it to this. 
So I'm leaving him open. I'm going to go ahead and make the one for the other side real quick. So again, same thing, little twist, the bad circle, make sure it's on the top side, slam our bunny down, grab him, twist, and cool, and cool. And yeah, if you're gonna have something that's like really bearing a lot of weight or gonna get pulled a lot, like usually if I was making anklets, I would do a couple more coils and make sure they were pretty tight. Uh, whereas if I was doing something more on the wrist, like I might do fewer, it kind of depends what you're making these for. But all in all, they're pretty dang durable. Uh, nails with cut, point this guy straight up and curve them around. Now I said before you could do this with pliers, like this end may end up looking a little janky because it's not the same as putting it around a perfectly curved surface, but in a pinch, if this is all you have and you need something to happen, you can still kind of get that shape. That's all done with this. You'll just notice it's a little more like <laughs> versus a smooth curve, uh, but you could do that and twist that around and get a similar thing. So like if you aren't ready to spring for this and you just want to try it out, you can make do with these guys. It, it can happen. Um, all right, so we've got those guys ready for something to get hooked onto it. Um, so in this case, like I just took a piece of wire uh, and sort of ran it through some beads and I did that same thing on the edge with making circles. So I'll do like a quick example of this. Uh, you can make a nice little circle on the end like so, uh, and then you can run this through beads. My other camera went out. You abandoned me. The chat's crying. They were very upset that you were gone. Tom has returned everybody. So let's say we want to do something. I don't know. I just grabbed some beads. So we made kind of the circle on this end. Uh, we'll run our beads through. These are just random things I had. Please don't count this as jewelry designing. This is a how-to, not a what's pretty. Um, and basically, you can just clip this edge short. And do your end. Actually, that might be a little long. Let's take a little more off. Zoop. Don't laugh at my sounds. Mm -hmm. He likes my sounds. Uh, so there we have like a dude that has little clasps or little circles on each side, which then we can just kind of work into here and close this up, make sure it stays and do the same with the other side. Uh, and we're going to pretend this is a super fancy design uh, that would go around your Wrist, necklace, this is a weird size. A really big ankle, this is a choker. It's a choker. Um, the other cool thing about this is, let's say you have got this as a thing that you like. Uh, all you have to do is kind of open these up real quick and you can change it out for something else. So here is truly hearkening back to my Renaissance days. Uh, a very popular thing was adding bells to everything. Um, these are actually, literally like three little bells left over from when I used to make this uh, all on the weekends. So we'll just add these guys in, close this off. Again, we're sticking, we're using that leather. This is kind of why I love the leather. You can just kind of stick into it and it's got like flex to it and it'll hold, uh, but it'll make it look nice and finished and beautiful. But uh, yeah, we're just using the, the chain that already existed and now we have this little thing. I don't know if you can hear the cool jingles, but uh, now we've got a jingly anklet, but it looks very renaissance and voila. Uh, and you can switch this out for anything. Cool. Questions so far? Jingle jangle. That's what we're about, those jingle jingles. Um, cool. And let's talk about, since we've started talking about like things you can do incorporating beads. Um, 
something else to note. So I've just sort of showed you how to like make your own, uh, what are these things called? There's actually a name for them. Hold on, I'm gonna cheat. Uh, so they're called eye pins. Okay, so there's a thing called eye pins, which are basically the start of what we just made. Get out of here. And you can buy them already done. Uh, which basically someone's already done a nice twist on an end and then this side's open so you can just pop on some beads. Um, the cool thing about that is it starts getting us into some like how you chain things or make chained necklaces. So let me pull in some beads. This is my bead buddy. Uh, you don't need a bead buddy. I've just purchased Bead Buddy recently so that it would be easier for me to talk about it and show you guys stuff. Um, I guess you get them from BeadBuddy.net marketing. Uh, it keeps all your stuff and I guess you can like trans transfer them easily. Usually I just work on whatever surface, but I was really worried about just dropping beads uh, nonstop on the stream. So Bead Buddy, you get a free endorsement. <laughs> so if you guys have ever seen like chained beads like this, it is essentially the technique we just did where you use jeweler, jeweler's pliers and you do a little loop and it goes through your bead and then you loop the other end and then you just do the whole bunch and connect them all and you get like really cool chains. Like you can do necklaces, you can do really cool stuff with it. Um, is this camera working now? Okay, well, you'll never see the large one. Here's a really horrible angle of, this was a bouquet I made for my friend Virginia, who might be watching the chat still, she was on earlier. Um, and it's very beautiful when you can actually see it hanging, but it's got all these like dangling beads and chain work and like beads hanging off chains. It looks very glamorous. And basically I did all of it exactly like I just showed you where I like twisted, put a pearl on, twisted it, added it to a chain. So really simple techniques. Uh, sometimes you can add like a couple things to a chain and go. So wanted to share this because obviously you can do a ton of cool stuff with it. Um, so you can either do just like I did with this guy a minute ago by hand, uh, or you can cheat and you can kind of buy some of these pre-made and you can string up whatever design you want uh, and then twist, cut and twist off the end yourself, um, like, like I just showed you, or I will rock your world with something I just found out about literally last year when my hands were bleeding from doing all that for the bouquet. Uh, I don't know what they're called because they did not do a good marketing job and like name it on their things. But I, I found these at Joann's in the jewelry aisle. Um, and what they do is they make these little perfect circle ends for you. So you slide your wire here. I'll do this with like a regular wire first so it's easier to see. Uh, here's one that's falling off. So basically you put your wire, there's like a, a little hole over here, you see? So you put it through like that, right? And it cuts it twists it and it makes a perfect little like circly loop for you, right? Uh, and it does it to the size of what you have. So this is like a 2.25 loop. I bought two of these. I think they had three different sizes. Maybe there's more. I was very excited about this uh, as you can imagine because you could just be like, boop, done, on to the next one. So I got these. And you can use that for both ends, or you can get really lazy and basically use these pins, fill it up with whatever you want, slide it through that hole, get it right to the edge, and it puts everything in and does a really nice, tight job of it. So, like, that guy's ready to go and to be added to a chain. And then, like, obviously it's closed, but if you want to add it to the chain, you can just kind of, like, open it a smidge, hook it onto its buddy. These are all technical terms you guys will learn when you're pro beaters uh, and then kind of close this guy back up. 
and voila, you have whatever decorative chain thing you want. So it's really simple to get really elaborate and cool looking things. Uh, again, you don't need fancy tools, but if you're doing nine trillion of them like I was, uh, these guys were kind of a lifesaver. So cool tools I didn't know about, and now you know. Um, okay, so let's talk about like beading with like wire, bracelets, anklets. Again, channeling my Renaissance days. Boy, we made a lot of anklets. Um, and some of them were leather, and then we also did some that were just beads. So basics of beading. Um, we're going to use today, this one doesn't have a thing on it. Uh, I think this was from Joanne's too. I don't know. This is like a nylon monofilament, so it's all plastic. You can kind of see it's like clear. I got this for costumes because it's just clear and most of the stuff I wear on like cosplay does I'm not wearing like an anklet every day forever it's like for a costume so it doesn't have to be that durable you can also get this where there's um like basically encased metal uh that's a little bit stronger that's what we used to use when we were making like anklets for people that they might wear daily you can also get some of this that's like stretchy but in this case uh I use the non-stretchy for the technique we're gonna do now Mm -hmm. Grab it. So let's say we're going to make an anklet. Uh, you'll cut this a little longer than what you need, as is common practice. Uh, usually I'll have like a ribbon or like a tape measure or something. I'll know like I need seven inches. Actually, when we were making these for Renaissance Festival, we had like various sizes. We would just make a bunch in several different sizes so they would be ready for different people. Um, but you'll go ahead and cut your length. And what we're gonna do to start and finish this is use something called seed beads. So, uh, not seed beads, dang it. These are seed beads. We're using crimping beads to like close things off. So crimping beads come, you can get them in different colors like gold, silvers, bronzes. Um, they have different sizes. Uh, so they're meant to crimp different like thicknesses of wire or whatever you happen to be threading through. Um, so actually I've got two in here that are different sizes that I'll never be able to lift up. Okay, so if you guys can see this, like, like this. can you see how this guy's like much bigger than the gold one, silver buddy, bigger than gold buddy? So like, he would be too big to use for this. We wouldn't be able to smoosh him down enough to where it would catch. The way crimping beads work uh, is that they're metal, but they're designed to be like squished flat, basically. So along the same idea of this, where there's like a metal thing, you put something through and then you squish it so that it holds, that's what crimping's, crimping beads do for beading. Um, so a lot of times you'll see like whatever your finding is, you'll have your wire running through it, and then you'll have a crimping bead just after it that's like crimped down and then all the beading happens after it. Uh, I actually prefer doing it a little differently and hiding the crimping bead as part of the design. So for this example, we'll do, uh, let's see, I'm making up a design. This may not be pretty, you guys. This is not design with Jenny. This is learn how to do the thing. So we're gonna put this crimping bead on first. This is where it gets really small and maybe you guys will never see anything. But there you go. So crimping bead is on. Yay, the camera picks it up, that's helpful. Um, you can also use BT dubs. There are uh, like jeweler's needles like this that you can kind of thread and use the thread stuff. I learned how to do it without that. So I'm just, I like just using the actual thing. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna put the, the crimping bead on first. Then I'm gonna do, I don't know, a couple of these seed beads. So we'll just do two blue ones because that sounds pretty. Clearly I'm not used to uh, operating with ridiculously long nails. Only theirs. All right, so those are on. And then what we're gonna do 
is add on our closure. Closure, I've added syllables to it. And then the plan is to, once it's through the closure, we're gonna take this end and go back through these other three beads that we have on here. Uh, so I like to kind of grab all three of them together and try and just like shoot them all at the same time. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Zoot. Get up. Oh, the drama. Will it happen? Recommend doing this not on camera, holding it away from your face. Get through that bead. There. Okay. We've done it. I think. Success. All right. So if you guys can see that, we've gone, there you can see that extra piece. So we've gone through these beads, around the clasp, back out through. Uh, then you want to hold your two ends and then take your needle and pliers and you're going to like gently caress. You're going to hold on to your uh, crimping bead so you can move it. And I like to push it up against so that it's pretty close to this, but not so tight that it's rigid. I give it a little room to breathe. And then you're basically just going to squeeze it and crush it. Uh, and now you can see that bead that was once round is flat, or I hope you guys can see it. I think you can. And these beads are not going anywhere. Now I've given it a little bit of room. You could make it really tight. I just don't like when these are rigid feeling because I feel like it makes, it puts a lot of undue sort of stress on this bend. So having it to where it can hang is just, they last longer, I think. If Renaissance Festival has taught me anything, it's that they'll last longer this way. Um, all right, so. That is the start of it. But, but what, you say, internet, do we do with this weird extra dangly bit? So I don't like cutting it off right by the seed, like the seed, I keep calling it a seed bead, uh, the crimping bead. I like to hide it in another bead. So I'll usually leave a little bit of it on there and whatever the next part of our design is. So like, let's say it's two more of these blue beads or maybe whatever bead I pick up. I should stop trying to design this. I really am just using random beads that I have left behind. Uh, so we'll put a couple beads through here. And instead of having it be weird and stick out, we're gonna do that same thing where we just sort of thread it through those existing beads so that it hides it. One. To get in there. Yes. All right. So then we can start doing, I don't know, whatever our design is. Let's say whatever these big beads are, just so you don't have to suffer through me doing a bunch of tiny beads uh, slowly. Add these guys in. And then what you get is that second little piece, instead of it sticking out or being crazy, you can hide it in all these beads like that. Now it is hidden forever, our secret, uh, tucked away inside beads. Oh, well, inside most beads. There. Two. So you can see that's where our crimping bead is, but the fact that I've, oops, focus. There you go. So the fact that I've kind of hidden it between these two other ones, I mean, I say hide it, but it feels a little more designed to me. Without it, like it ends up being kind of a small negative space. So I find if you put it right next to these clasps that it ends up looking like a weird empty space before the design starts. This just gets like your beads closer to that. And maybe that's my own personal design preference, but uh, that's what I like. So try it, do your own thing. I encourage you to do whatever. Um, now let's fast forward to, we've strung the whole thing. Look, we're on a baking show now. So we've strung this whole guy up. 
I've done the same thing over here where I've sort of done two beads crimping, two beads onto the design. Uh, let me show you how to finish the other side off. So we're gonna do the inverse of what we just did. So we'll do two beads. Womp and womp. I guess I should look if there's any questions so far. Best part of panels, experts suffered to learn on our behalf. I love, I don't know. I love not looking perfect at doing stuff because uh, that's the biggest secret of the experts is we all still donk stuff up constantly. Um, I literally made these things for years and years and years. And every now and then you just mess something up or you try something new and it doesn't work out and then you do something else. Um, okay, so we've got two, we've got our little unsquished bead, seed, uh, crimping bead, keep calling it seed bead. Uh, crimping bead, crimpy is there, crimpy for short. No, I'll remember him. Now we need the other side of this. Put this on my mouth, hold on to it. So right now he's kind of hooked down here. I'm gonna actually take him off or not. Okay, thank you. All right, so this is one of these guys, Oop, these guys. So we're gonna go through his little hole and then same way we did before, he gets to hang out, but we're gonna take this end and go through these first two beads and the crimping bead. Mm. One, boom. Bead two, a boom. Crimping bead, boom. And you'll notice I'm not really worrying about where they're going. They're not going anywhere. I just have an extra length there. Put that goes through. It's hard to see with all the stuff. Yep. Okay. So it's through. Make sure it goes through all of them. We're great. So at this point, I check and make sure that where I've tucked the other end hasn't come untucked from its beads while I've been doing the rest of it. Check, we're looking good there. So now the goal is, since we have all of this extra string, is to kind of get rid of it and tighten everything up. So I usually kind of keep my fingers where that end of the clasp is so that we can get a little closer and tighter. And I'm just pulling this extra piece. And then I start just holding uh, the clasp piece. And then you just pull until everything's tightened. And again, I don't like tightening stuff so much that there's no wiggle in it because it's not as comfortable to wear and it kind of puts unnecessary pressure on everything. But when you've got it basically where you want it, you're gonna get a little needle nose in there with your crimpy and you're gonna squish, you're gonna crush it. You're gonna take out all your aggression. Uh, you can crush it in one direction and crush from the other side and make it make sure it's good. You just wanna make sure it's nice and flat and nothing's going anywhere. Uh, so check and check. Don't ask why I'm using gold and silver. Uh, I found out that I don't have any silver crimping beads at my house except for that big one I showed you, which wouldn't work with these. So pretend this was intentional and I just love mixing metals. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna cut, again, not next to this crimp. I mean, you could, I just think it looks kind of not as finished, not as nice. I'm gonna cut about as much as there is for these like two bigger beads. And because I've left a little bit of wiggle room, what we can do now is basically bend this and get it into the holes and just finish it out the same way we did the other. It's just a little trickier than before because we only have this little bit to work with. Uh, sometimes it's helpful to just use your pliers if you have ridiculously long nails that you haven't been able to do anything about because of uh, COVID and you use that to kind of get it going or get it in the hole. Where you can see it, hopefully you can see it. There. Okay, so see it's in there and there's a little like loop you can just kind of push it push it in there get in there dog or use your pliers if you're useless and have stupid nails uh tom laughs 
I'm going to make Tom wear some press on nails and do intricate stuff as a challenge. Okay, so there, voila, it's hidden. Oops, can you see it? So now, I guess if you really wiggle these around, you can kind of see how there's two little wires in there, maybe not, but there's nothing sticking out, looking unfinished, looking weird, and we have an anklet. Voila. Uh, let me clasp it, which might be the hardest part of the entire evening. in get do it okay there we go and if we're talking cool anklet designs another thing that i like to do is sometimes like okay this isn't the fanciest clasp there are ones that look way fancier than this but turning your clasp into kind of like a piece that you'll see like on your ankle stuff moves around so i always liked also the idea of like building up around these crimping beads because that starts to feel like a featured part of your anklet piece when you're wearing it. Like it feels like a nice something, something. And so does the other side. Uh, but yeah, that is some beading basics. I think I've actually run on time, which is great considering I never really practiced how fast to do all this. So hit me with questions, y'all. Super cool stream, thanks. I'm glad you guys liked it. I hope you guys will try this. Uh, beading is really fun and it adds a lot to costumes. You can use a lot of these techniques where you can like basically string up, use these crimp crimping beads to finish it, not cut off the rest of it, but then use like, I could add a crimping bead here and then use what's left of this and a needle and thread and basically sew this onto my costume and have like, a nice dangly bit if you just pretend this was designed with that in mind. Uh, there's just so many different ways you can start using this or finishing things off. Uh, with it. Uh, hold on. That's my fault. Yeah. I'm broken. Oh, it's an idea. I was giving you your turn. <laughs> oh, thanks. Am I back? It's my face? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thomas ruined everything. I'm sorry. Stream ruined there, by you're Thomas. Back. Please send all complaints to Thomas. Um, yeah, please send all complaints to Thomas. But yeah, this, this is the gist of it. And from here, like you now know enough about wire work and kind of some basic stuff there. You can get into like chaining. Man, maybe we should do a chain mail uh, thing next, next year. But uh, yeah, I hope this was helpful. If you guys have questions or ideas for future panels like Cosplay America is one of my favorite conventions because they let me teach and they I mean I'm sure you guys have been watching all day like all the freaking awesome talented people teaching all sorts of stuff so uh, they take it very seriously when people are like I want to see blank so if there's something you guys want to see or wasn't covered I'm sure during the day let the con know um, yeah let's see anything I enjoyed learned a lot yay if I have any educational resources to recommend Ooh, God, the internet. No, that sounds really, I'm not being flippant, I swear. Um, I luckily learned a lot of this from a human uh, in, in medieval garb. So I lucked out that I got kind of my feet wet there. Uh, and beyond that, I literally just Google specific things I want to try and figure out. Um, so, I am terrible at resources because I never really use just one. I sort of get intrigued about like, how could I do this different, differently? Um, so I guess I'm awful and don't have a specific thing to recommend other than like, um, just I start finding and following anyone who I see doing anything I'm slightly interested in. I'm addicted to TikTok lately and their algorithm's amazing. So if you start liking people making stuff, boy, will they share it. Like. I get served people making knots all the time. So like, I recommend just trying stuff, find some people like Google it and then ask them questions. That's the other thing too, is I think most people out there who are creators or who are doing this or who are posting are really open to answering questions uh, about how they do stuff. So sorry, that's kind of a non-answer, but I mean, man, just the internet and the humans out there who are, who are making stuff. Uh, and if you have questions, you can always like DM me on Instagram and I will do my darndest to answer. Uh, I love trying to like figure out how to do things. And thank you, happy birthday, yay.
chain mail chain mail is fun we used to do like chain mail like like four-sided chain mail bracelets uh maybe that should be a class for next year i think we really fun michael scale mail, scale mail will be cool that's true scale mail will be fun maybe i'll do chain mail and scale mail a uh, little known fact michael I conned into working uh, at Renaissance Festival with me for a year or two. That might not mean much to everyone in this chat, but uh, uh, he worked at Renaissance doing this stuff before he went on to make scale mail. Um, so just proof these techniques can turn into a lot of other stuff. <laughs> Yay. Oh God, I really need to do my YouTube channel some more. I will start doing that again at some point. Sorry guys. I'd rather do it at a con in person with people or like this. Um, but yeah, I hope this was helpful. If you guys come up with questions, uh, you know, tomorrow you sleep on this or you try it and suddenly you f nothing makes sense anymore, uh, just let me know. And I am happy to try and uh, point you in the right direction. Uh, but yeah, the other cool thing about this, like let's say you've done this and you wanna practice doing it again, you can literally, just like cut the wire and get all your beads back boop, and you know all your findings of, okay you've lost your two crimp beads sorry they're 99 cents for like a, a a metric ton of them it's not a metric ton but you get a bunch um so if you just want to practice or play around with things too these are pretty cheap and easy and like the beads and the wire go a long way so i just recommend like Practice with whatever you find until you feel comfortable with it and uh, have fun. That's all I got, guys. I'll hand you back over to the convention, the officials. <laughs> you make it sound like we're in charge of something. It's like you are. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it, it works out pretty well for me because I, I get to meet a lot of really creative people and then they put together a lot of programming. <laughs> And I'm just like, yeah, that's good. Do that. That's awesome. So you guys really make that a lot easier for me. Um, so yeah, but happy birthday. Thanks. I know everyone's telling you, but we're going to keep doing it. I appreciate it. Uh, I Google yeah. image searched a cake for you. So <laughs> that's compassion, <laughs> that's right? I am definitely going to uh, go eat some cake after I get off this call. So. Oh, well then don't let me hold on too long. Yeah, like you're... You're missing out on birthday cake. Don't ever let me stand between someone and birthday cake. Oh, it's there was definitely pre-stream cake. And now oh, good. Okay. Post-stream cake. Because like it's you have to hit the most important cake of the day, um, <laughs> which is the pre-stream cake that gives you all that energy so that about the time you crash, you can get more cake. It's, it's why I couldn't string stuff. I'm too shaky from all the cake. There you go. That's fair. <laughs> all righty. Well, I'm going to let you go do that. And then I'm just going to very quickly um, wrap up with everybody so that we can all rest a bit because we've been doing this for a long time. It's been a long event. Thanks, well, everyone. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you next year in person. Bye. It'll be great. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>